It's been five days since the Liberals dumped Hassan Guillé as a candidate after online posts describes it, described rather as anti-Semitic were made public. Today, Guillé spoke out saying that he regrets those comments. Hassan Guillé is a former Liberal candidate for a Montreal area riding. He joins us now from Montreal. Hi, Mr. Guillé. Thanks for making time for the show. Thank you for inviting me. Mr. Guillé, did the Liberal Party come to you about these allegations? And if so, when did they? Well, the first time, well, they came, uh, I had a meeting with them on the 8th of August. They sent me an email the 2nd of August saying to me, as I said in the press conference this morning, saying to me that uh, they need to meet with me uh, to, to discuss some publications on previous publications on Facebook. That email was the 2nd of, of uh, August and I had a meeting with them on the 8th of August. And you said in your press conference as well that you were working together with the party on a sort of outreach plan or PR plan. Can you tell me exactly what that means and, and over what period of time were you doing that? Well, we had a meeting with them last, last Wednesday, which is, I think, if my memory was good, the 28th of August. And we put together a plan that I, uh, since I have many friends within the Jewish community, even uh, rabbis and uh, everybody who knows me, they know that I'm uh, very open, I have friends in all communities, I'm bridge build builders, and I have friends in the Jewish community. I've been in synagogues, I'm, uh, uh, I'm a, 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 a very uh, active militant against uh, Islamophobia and against anti-Semitism. So the plan was I will reach out some friends within the Jewish community. <clears throat> we'll talk to them. We'll, we'll show them what we uh, what uh, are these allegations, and uh, we work with them to come out together. That they will come say, well, we know Hassan. He been maybe he made some mistakes in the past. Maybe he published something in long time ago, but the the one we are working with, the no, the one we know him, he's not. He's far from being anti-Semitic. And uh, as a, a Jewish leader said to me when we were talking to him, he said, uh, uh, an anti-Semite doesn't, doesn't, doesn't come to the synagogue. Uh, it doesn't come to, to, to meet with Jews. And Hassan been in synagogue so many times. So, so the plan was I will uh, reach out to some of uh, leaders of the Jewish community. We, uh, and then uh, we'll, uh, we'll get the news out together in the same time. <clears throat> And we move on. That was Wednesday, the 28th of August. And I said to them in that meet meeting, I said, uh, I, uh, I need these uh, allegations. If you can send them to me, they said, OK, they send me the allegations uh, uh, Wednesday evening. And as I said in the press conference, what was surprising, the date was the 29th of May, which is exactly the following day of our victory in the nomination uh, contest. So they knew of those allegations since May 29th, is that what you're saying? It, they knew it or not, I'm not sure. I don't know when this reached the Liberal Party itself. I don't want to jump to conclusions. Okay. But what I can say, uh, and I said it this morning, I've been in discussion with the Liberal Party since 2017. And the, the, the allegations are prior to that. And my well, page, actually, they're not. They're from January of 2017 and, and after that as well. But, but even, I mean, I've been with you know, uh, the, the most, of the, uh, most of them were before. Regardless, we've been in discussion since November 2017 for a possible candidacy. And we had frequent meetings, Free, very frequent meetings. And uh, they never if, brought up any of this? No, 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 nothing. And what I really find sorry and regrettable, either they could say, Hassan, you cannot, we, we like you, we, we know what you are doing is a great thing, but you cannot run because there is this and that, if it's really unsurmountable, or if there are things we can work around, which I think we do, they can say, Hassan, you have these issues, you have to put it to rest before being able to let you run for candidacy. And none, none of these came out. And it came out only during uh, a few weeks ago. And as soon as we put together a plan, the, the plan was aborted. Like we had the meeting on Wednesday. On Wednesday, They sent me the text on Wednesday evening. Thursday, I had meetings with some people from the Jewish community. Uh, Friday morning, I was talking to my contact 
in the Liberal Party, say, explain to them in large what we are doing. They, he, he agreed. He found it is a good idea. And even he suggested a few names from the Liberal Caucus, Jewish names from the Liberal Caucus. He can, check, he can work with, he can ask them to, to join the movement of reconciliation and, and solution. That was around 8 o'clock in the morning, Friday, 12.30. Then the same person sent me an email. I was driving saying to me, well, check your email. No, he sent me an SMS saying, check your email. I was driving, so I looked quickly on my email. I found that, that the email of uh, Nibrait and uh, the, the, which you saw. And honestly, I was, I was glad in a way, but I was too naive now, I think. I was glad that, okay, the news came out because what were, they were scared of when we were talking to them, they were scared of that this might come during the election uh, campaign. Who, and who in the Liberal, sorry to interrupt, but who in the Liberal Party were you dealing with at this point? Honestly, I'm not at liberty to give names, okay? Why not? But I don't know if it's confidential or no, but somebody from the Prime Minister office and somebody from, from the le leadership of the election campaign. So the, the Prime Minister's office, you're saying, was directly involved in these yes. talks with you? From the beginning. Since 2017, I was in direct communication with the Prime Minister's office. And even throughout, though, just to be clear, throughout the time uh, of the past month, when they raised these, these allegations with you, was someone from the Prime Minister's office dealing with you then, or that's just no, the part? No, no. When, when, they, when they raised this issue was the, the people of the Green Light uh, Committee. But then uh, I met with them the 8th of August. It seems to me everything, because they asked me about explanation, I explained, it seems to me, it seems to me that things were, were working in the right direction. And they said to me, as I'm saying, they were afraid of the media. They were concerned if these things come out in the middle of the campaign, making the headlines, and the conservative will take advantage of that. They will not have time to react. So they were saying, if this come out, how do you answer? And I gave some answer. They coached me that, well, this is too long, this is too short, uh, you need only one sentence. Anyway, we were working, it seems to me we were working as a, a, a task force. Point okay? is, you didn't think that they were going to disqualify you? No, 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 no. It was like uh, working to find a solution. Right. And that was the 8th of August. I didn't hear from them till uh, last week, and then they asked me to come to a meeting on the 28th of August. And that meeting, we had a definite plan to talk to the Jewish community and to get the information out to the media before the, conserv before the, the, uh, the beginning of the election campaign. And then we, we, I can come and uh, the Jewish uh, leaders from the Jewish community come, come with us and then we will we'll put it to rest and then uh, uh, we, we, we pull the, pa the carpet underneath the feet of the conservatives. You, you also, uh, sorry, I just want to interrupt you for a second because you, you did say in your statement that, and I, and I understand this is a lot about the logistics, but that your views have evolved since these postings and some of them are not as old as you're saying prior to the 2017, some are after. How have your views evolved? For example, would you say you, you remarked in one Facebook post that the Zionists control American politics. Have your view, views evolved since that? And what are they now? Look, what I said in, in, in that day, put it this way. At that time, I was private citizen. I felt at the free command, the command this and that. Now I'm running for public office. It's not up to me as a, a, an MP to judge the American policy or not the American policy. But do you still believe that? No. The thing is, I do not believe that, and we, everyone is judged for what he's doing, okay? Regardless if that person is Zionist or Republican or Democrat, we, 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 we are human beings, and, and each one has his own ideology, each one has his own motivation. Do you regret writing that? Yes. Now I, I know I regret having written this, and now I know that uh, I should have known better at that time. It's a sensitive issue. Uh, the, the Middle East, the Middle East uh, conflict went on too long. There were so thousand and maybe even thousand and maybe even more uh, people who lost their lives on both sides. And it's not on putting a, a post on Facebook that we are going to help or resolve the issues. What we can do to resolve the issue is exactly what I've been doing for the last two years, is to, through dialogue, through visit to, to, to synagogues, through inviting Jewish friends to, uh, to, to mosque and to, through dialogue. And if we cannot have a dialogue here in Montreal, where can we have a dialogue? Uh, 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 and what we as Canadians can do, we can engage in positive 
mediation, if you want to say. And however, the solution has to come out from the people in the region, not from us here. And myself, I was, I am running now for office in Canada. I'm running for the Canadian Parliament. I'm not running for... Are you still a, going to run without the party? Well, as I said this morning, the decision is not made yet. We are still evaluating, but all the issues, uh, all the avenues are being evaluated. Okay, I'll leave it there. Thank you so much, Mr. Guy. I really appreciate your time. Thank you very much. We asked the Liberal Party for a response to Mr. Guillet's claims. They sent us this statement. Following an internal review, the Liberal Party of Canada took the appropriate steps to remove Mr. Guillet as the Liberal candidate for the rotting of saint lenard saint michel That decision is final. Guillet claims the Liberal Party was working on a public relations strategy to deal with those posts and their possible political fallout. Have a listen. I met with them the 8th of August. It seems to me everything because they asked me about explanation. I explained it seems to me, it seems to me that things were working in the right direction. And they said to me, as I'm saying, they were afraid of the media. They were concerned if these things come out in the middle of the campaign, making the headlines, and the conservative will take advantage of that. They will not have time to react. So they were saying, if this come out, how do you answer? And I gave some answer. They coached me that, well, this is too long, this is too short, uh, you need only one sentence. Anyway, we were working, it seems to me we were working as a, a, a task force. If members of the party were, quote, coaching him and aware of his posts before B'nai B'rith made its complaints, why was he dropped last Friday? We're back with the power panel, Amanda, Tim, Kathleen, and Chris. Kathleen, I'll start with you. So this is kind of an odd one. Uh, he also, I should say, says that his, his views have evolved. I, I asked him about some of those views, which are pretty, uh, they are anti-Semitic, the ones that mm -hmm. those posts show. What do you think's going on here? Well, this is the mystery around candidate vetting, what happens behind the scenes when you pull back the curtain in terms of what um, party operatives essentially do. But this this story seems very strange. And I look forward to seeing the whole interview mm -hmm. with Mr. Guillet because, frankly, it seems very weird that the party would, in fact, be aware of the comments um, having if the party themselves have determined them to be anti-Semitic and then trying to spin that, you know. Um, so that seems very strange to me and not the process you would go. If you've done the vetting, if you've, 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 you're aware of the comments, it's one thing if you'd be sideswiped side and not, not to know about certain comments, although some stuff parties just are being purposely ignorant. Like let's take the 20, you know, 20, uh, was it the 2011 or 2015 peeing in a cup oh, guy God. for the conservative, right? Uh, but uh, great, great to go back the there. Man, Wow, yeah. You gotta go but, somewhere, Kathleen. No, <laughs> but the thing is, this kind of vetting process, if you know in events, you don't let yeah. them pass the vetting process and yeah. you do not let them get to the nomination level. And I guess they, when they do, <clears throat> It does cost parties days and days on the election campaign. And in this campaign, with the new expense limits, basically each day on the campaign costs three quarters of a million dollars, $750,000 per day. So if they were to lose this candidate, Mr. Gay, in the middle of the campaign, it would take three days, liberals on the, their back heels, defending him in Quebec. That's a he really He says that they told him cost. that was their worst fear, that this would come out And that's what happens. Campaign. It happened to the liberals in 2011. They they had they nominated a candidate by the name of An Andre Forbes in Manhattan. Annika Wagen, and we knew he was a white supremacist. We knew he was a racist. We dropped the file on the liberals in the middle of the campaign, and they had to sack the candidate. That's what happens. Amanda, what, the Liberal Party isn't saying much here. We, we asked them for a statement. They said, following an internal review, the Liberal Party, well, first we actually asked for an interview, but they sent us a statement. The Liberal Party of Canada took the appropriate steps to remove Mr. Guillet as the Liberal candidate for the rotting of saint Lenard, saint Michel. That decision is final. I went back and asked them, well, he's alleging that you were coming up with some kind of PR plan with him, that you knew about these before before they become, became public, and I didn't even get a response. So what do you think's going on? Well, I don't know. I think it's strange, too, but I also think that they did the right thing. They dropped him as a candidate. He's not the first candidate to be dropped for insensitive, uh, raci racist comments, and he won't be the last. But it, it is strange to me that there was this interim period. The only thing that I could I could think is that this was a time when they were trying to figure out what exactly these comments were. Was it really him? Um, are these social media posts legit? What is his response to it? I mean, there's a lot of things that go into that. And at what level was it being, you know, vetted or considered and has to work its way up the chain? It's not like this happened seven months ago and, and today it was dropped. We're talking about a matter of days. So I think that... Well, um, he says that they knew as of the beginning of August, August so a yeah. month ago. Yeah. Okay. 
So yeah, according to him, to be fair, like I, I again, I asked the liberals to respond if that's true or not, and we didn't get a response. It was funny. About three weeks ago, I ran into somebody who was involved in the conservative campaign, and they were making this very point. Uh, Kathleen made it a moment ago that there are a bunch of liberal candidates they believe that haven't been properly vetted that are going to create problems for the Liberal Party during the campaign. So as Kathleen said, is there a problem with the liberal vetting system? Uh, are, is the work being done there, political vetting at its best, is imperfect because you don't have the tools that uh, police agencies and everybody else has? But this is embarrassing for the Liberals, whether Mr. Gay is telling the truth or not. They do have a day of a story now where he alleges that he was being coached to, to, to get through this particular Mm -hmm. problem and we've seen at a higher level when the liberals have tried to manage bigger problems by coaching or strategizing their way through it instead of embracing the particular challenge. Although uh, a lot of parties do that. Uh, yeah, I know, but they, they seem to have had a few more blips uh, than, than other parties have had uh, when they try to communicate their way out when perhaps in these circumstances they should just say, you're gone. On, on the yeah. front end of this, um, I, I know the calculation would have been that um, what value does he still bring or does he bring to this party as a candidate? We all know he gave a very, very widely yeah. regarded speech uh, yeah, in the... Uh, aftermath of the mosque shooting and the funerals. Um, so there was some value, I think, that they saw in him. And, and I, my guess is, I, I tried to reach out to liberals today, I didn't get very far, that they tried to weigh that value against what was maybe allegations. Um, but the fact of the matter is they have a right to get rid of him. They got rid of him. I don't think anybody at this point really disputes that except for Mr. Guillet himself. I mean, these are how much we've evolved. This is the kind of material that is toxic during a campaign. I guess the real question is at what point and who was actually coaching him? I didn't hear any names here. Maybe they he could interview. No, I, I asked him and he said that he said that people that were involved in bringing him to the party included someone from the PMO and, and people from the party. But then as far as who would have known at the beginning of August about these allegations and who were coaching him, part of the green light committee. Uh, we know the liberals right. have tried to coach people through <laughs> in circumstances. SNC Lavalin comes yes. to mind about how we can manage issues. I, I, I think that's a natural reaction for any political party. I'm, you mm -hmm. guys have all done it. I haven't. But in the end, I'm sure his, his whatever value he may have brought was quickly overrun by the, the, the problems that he would present to them in the future. Well, and I wonder, the other, yeah, go ahead, Amanda. What, well, the only other thing I'd say just from a communication standpoint and the challenge that's really in front of parties when it comes to social media is we're not talking about a accounts that are a year or two years old. Social media accounts have been around now for more than a decade. So the vetting process the itself is new. so, yes, yeah, no, I, I understand. I'm just saying at large, yeah, yeah. as you look at candidates and the content that they may have produced two years ago, five years ago, 10 years ago, it's an extraordinary challenge for parties to make sure that they're doing a thorough enough job to catch the one thing that could throw them off course in the middle of an election. Well, I wonder also, like he, he's very unequivocal that that, that that he does, you know, he's he's like I I have many friends in the synagogue. I'm friends with rabbis. He right. he says that his views have evolved. He's I, he mm -hmm. you know I ask him very specifically about certain things. He said I don't believe them anymore. So I guess as a party, you just have to say sorry. It's yeah, not going to look the, good. Uh, I'm friends with defense is one that's often used when people have stood no, up on a particular issue. So again, as a party, you got to be pretty firm about this because totally. again, the liberals want the story to be gone tomorrow. It's going to continue probably for another 12 hours mm -hmm. because somebody. Is the GA telling the truth or not telling the truth? But no, you want to end it quickly and break the heart effectively. Oh, I'm going to break all your hearts right now. Oh. I know you're devastated. <laughs> I got to go. Sorry, thanks. You forgot to say Chris Hall's uncoachable. Nobody would ever try and train uncoachable. him. Uncoachable. No, no, they would not. Never. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thanks to the Power Panel this evening. Thank Amanda you. Alvaro, Tim Powers, Kathleen Monk, and Chris Hall. We're Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video. Thanks for watching.